How's it going, bros? My name is Pippa. And today we're looking at Sushant Singh Raiput. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I knew who this guy was, but I recently found out about him and I talked about him in a video and, it, and so many people freak out. This guy is a big deal. I just watched some videos of him and I thought he seemed like a really interesting dude. Unfortunately, he passed away about a month ago. So I just wanted to make this video to kind of tribute him and bring attention to him in his life. If that makes sense, I don't know. I just think he's a cool dude. I'm not gonna pretend like, oh, I was the biggest fan. No, I had no idea who he was, but I like what I've seen. Now, for those of you who don't know, he was a big actor. He was in movies like Detective Byom Keshi Bakshi. You ever seen that one? <laughs> he was big in, in India, in Bollywood, basically. Uh, he got a nomination for Best Actor, and in, he's been in commercially successful films like Kedarnath and Chichore. Yeah. His acting is cool and all, all right? But I think what is more impressive about him is the fact that he's actually really smart. I found out that he was ranked number seven in the engineering exams of all of India. Not bad. I used to study engineering myself, so... <laughs> I remember I was proud when I got the highest out of 200 people. Uh, I feel like out of all of India, it's a little bit more of a... <laughs> oh, more of an achievement. And he also, what I like about him, he, he came from humble beginnings as well. I'm not gonna try to force, like, oh, we're the same. It's just, I'm saying, I can relate to him. That's all. Like, it's anything the same growing up in Sweden and India. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized how this sounds like. <laughs> God damn it. He was also National Olympiad winner in physics. What? Smart dude, basically. Uh, and you can tell just by listening to him. Apparently, I saw here, he worked for uh, Ekta Kapoor. Remember her? That fucking dumb bitch. <laughs> I noticed uh, Sushant followed me on Instagram and I was so confused by it. I wonder if it was because I trolled Ekta. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless, he dropped out of engineering. I dropped out of engineering to pursue his dream. Uh, to work in show business and uh, one of the videos I, the first one I saw of him was when he did this university talk which I thought was super interesting and I wanted to share it with you guys today because I think he had a lot of really valuable lessons on life uh, so let's watch it excuse me if I don't make sense excuse me if I get a panic attack right now <laughs> but I'll try my best we love you anyway <laughs> yeah I became an actor because I had a problem. I was an introvert. You know, I'm, I'm the youngest of my family, and I was so pampered in, in uh, my house that when I used to step out, I uh, didn't know how to deal with people. So I, I gradually I became this very shy introvert kid who could not talk. Well, I still cannot talk. <laughs> and, uh, I here, here I go. Here I insert myself again. I can just relate to it. I, I was such an introvert as well. I still am. But I found this medium through YouTube to be extroverted and be this character. Which has just been so fun. And I guess he got the same way through acting. Alright, I would love to share my journey with you, my learnings, and in case you decide to drop out and uh, <laughs> join me in Bollywood, it will come very handy. <laughs> So, uh, I was thinking in the car, what do I talk about? Wait, this guy wrote the script for what he was gonna speak to a university on the car on the way there? That's impossible! <laughs> but after deep thinking, I, I, I zeroed down into two things that I can actually discuss about. These two things talk about chasing your dreams and actually living your dreams, which unfortunately Nobody mentioned to me when I was starting out. That's funny because I had the absolute opposite advice given to me. People were like, follow your dreams. Pick what you want. And I'm like, nah, I'm going to pick the job I hate because money. <laughs> so those two things are the biggest lie and the only truth about success that I was told about. I don't remember what it said, but I'll tell you what I think is that success has way more importance. I know it's easy for me to say this, but I think people put way too much importance on success itself. If you're having fun with what you're doing, then you're already successful and you can sustain yourself. Anything beyond that is just unnecessary, I think at least. Money 
plus recognition is equal to happiness is equal to success. Was that the lie? Because I totally agree. I feel like such a broken record because I think I've said this so many times and every time I say it, everyone gets so mad and I get it. Everyone's situation is different, but it is a general assumption in uh, society that these things will lead to happiness. I'll just be extra clear when I say this. Obviously, if you can't afford to pay your rent and all these things, yeah, it will help you. You will get happier if you get it, but I'm speaking money in excess, money in its multitude, what people dream about people imagine what would it be like if I had mo uh, so much money like millions what would I do that'd be crazy you know people love to fantasize about these things that's why the lottery exists and uh, people like to fantasize what it would mean to be recognized or uh, some someone of notoriety and we generally see Hollywood stars sh sh shiny and smiley and all that stuff when it has absolutely nothing to do with uh, uh, your happiness I think so at least Obviously, people react differently to different things, but they are literally things that are just like anything else. After a while, they're not going to be as appealing anymore. There are sensational pleasures, essentially. They'll fleet away. So let me begin by mentioning that I come from a very um, middle class family. And when I was growing up, money was a big, big, big differentiator in my life. Same for me, because my parents were so successful. They made a lot of money, but... Uh, and I always felt like, oh god, I need to live up to their standards. I need to get a job just so I can be like them. <laughs> I know, like, boohoo me, right? I'm just saying, there was a lot of pressure to, to perform well in that regard. And it wasn't until I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go on my own path where I actually found a lot <laughs> more also of it. In, uh, Ironically. Three generations of my family that I know of that are documented, nobody knew what fame uh, felt like. So basically, uh, both uh, money and recognition were missing when I started out. So I already started out as a failure. Let me be very precise. My family told me that I had to become an engineer. <laughs> I've heard that one as well. <laughs> Medical book for my sisters. Uh, yeah. So once I'm an engineer, then I can, uh, you know, try a civil services examination and then probably, yeah, that will be like opening the doors for all kind of happiness and I'll be forever successful, I'll be forever happy. This is the condition <laughs> that I experienced when I was growing up. All right, fair enough. Sweden or India, <laughs> it's the same apparently. <laughs> That's so funny. That's crazy. Is, so I became very good in studies, did fairly well in my 10th board exams. And then off I went to Delhi for my plus two, got myself enrolled in a nice school. And uh, with them in there and Fiji and half a dozen of uh, uh, other coaching institutes. <laughs> and uh, I used to share my room with three other similar aspirants. What it meant was, Every day after finishing my assignments, school assignments, and preparing for my engineering entrance exam, I had to wash my clothes, and I had to cook food for myself. But I wasn't complaining. Well, it was worth it, because after all, I was, for the very first time in my life, I was so close to become successful for the first time in my life. So yeah. Finally, I slogged, I got selected for several engineering colleges and I decided to take admission in Delhi College of Engineering, which is now known as DTU. Thank you. Are you my senior or junior? There was a celebration like this in my family too. <laughs> it's funny, I got into my university through entrance exams as well, which I worked really hard for and it was like, I got in. It's crazy how similar experience we had. And I thought as well, like, damn, I made it. Like, now it's a smooth sailing from here. <laughs> I could finally stop for a while and breathe, you know? I was telling myself that, you know what? Now you have made it. <laughs> you should be happy because you're supposed to be happy. But it wasn't working that much. Something was missing. There was a void that I could feel. So I, I thought maybe something bigger was required. For some reason, for some reason, incessantly, while uh, the first 18, 19 years of my life, the future me was much happier, much successful than the present me. So I was like, all right, fine. So I was forcing myself. I promised, uh, as I promised, I started preparing for civil services examination, and I was forcing myself to slog, uh, but I was bored. 
UPS, UPSC exams was still far away. In the meantime, I thought of doing theater and uh, I thought to learn dance because uh, to counter the, the <clears throat> shyness that I had, still have, and also because there were no girls in my engineering college for some reason. <laughs> uh, I felt cheated, man. We slog so much, you crack the entrance exam and you find that there are no girls. So, yeah, so somebody told me that there are very uh, good looking girls in dance uh, schools. So I was like, fine. And I go there. <laughs> There you have it. Just pick up dancing and you'll meet girls, guys. And, there uh, you have it. Or, once I started or with performing arts, I knew one thing for sure. I knew that I quite liked it. And three years later, imagine me sitting in the campus and I'm thinking, all right, I'm really interested in performing arts. And all I want to do is to earn money and to be recognized. So if I become a movie star, <laughs> hmm, I actually was very serious and I dropped out of my gosh in the third year when I was just two semesters away from getting the No movie. way, he was and that close. Wow. Yeah, I dropped that way sooner. Because obviously, yeah, I found YouTube and I was enjoying that so much more that didn't feel like I lost to drop out. The idea was to just quit quit school for a year and then I'll come back. <laughs> yep. Came to Mumbai, got heavily into theater, and also other skills that I thought were necessary to become an actor. And uh, by the way, this time I stayed with six other guys in a single room kitchen. But this time I was prepared for it. This time there was one difference. I was driven. Right. Self respect yeah. was at stake. <laughs> <laughs> My eight college mates, one of them is sitting right here in my shirt. Uh, they thought that I was that disaster that folks in engineering and B schools should never become. So I had to prove a point to everybody. I had to prove a point to my family. Most importantly, I had to prove a point to myself. And this was the time when I was also a background dancer. So I was dancing behind all the possible stars that you can think of, Shah Rukh Khan, Shah Kapoor, everybody. And I was thinking, I was thinking to myself while I was performing, okay, it's just three steps away, there, there. <laughs> and uh, everything will be sorted. And I kept going like that. And two years later, guess what? I got myself my first big break. I was selected for a primetime show on a TV. Now hear me out, it was a seriously a big break because I started earning. Right. People started recognizing me. To be honest, I would deliberately go and roam in all these malls so that people would look at me, smile. <laughs> That's funny. And I, was... I don't think I ever done that, no. <laughs> I guess I did. I did go out like make videos where I broke his people. I also suddenly discovered that I actually had many friends from like who were absent all this while, but suddenly they popped up. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy how that works, and, uh, right? I became popular. I was making good money to a point that money stopped being a differentiator in my life. And I was becoming more and more popular. Now, I cannot go to all those malls that I was going all alone. Right. So I wanted somebody to be with me, to save me. That's the thing, you don't realize. First time you get recognized is amazing, you love it, it's so cool. And that's an experience everyone wants to feel, but then you almost feel isolated where you can't go to malls and you can't go to closely packed areas anymore. You just feel like an alien. It's very uh, limiting. Lonely. First dream house. I bought myself my dream car. And just a note. Volvo XC90, thank you very much. To you as well. <laughs> I was getting such female attention that my engineering college friends could only possibly dream of. <laughs> Got him! Got him! <laughs> oh man. So I was having a time of my life. And then something unusual happened. I got used to everything. And I felt cheated. 
I stayed with all these dreams for 10 and 15 years of my life. I was promised happiness and I was promised success. But all these things stayed with me just for a few days. Right. And I'm punctuating me because I started from zero money and zero recognition. So I was not happy. How can that it be? I didn't like this version of success. And the future me again was luring the present me. But this time, I decided otherwise. I would do something else. I, so that gets us to the second point, which is the only truth. Yeah, I think he said it pretty well. It's like, he imagined these things happening for 10, 15 years of his life and then they disappear in a couple days and I think that's it. They're nice to have and everyone wants to experience it, but they don't last and we put way too much importance to them. It's a fantasy. It's always greater in our head. Always. Uh, I won't take too much time. I'll just try to keep it short. I figured something. I figured that something seemingly big things but not that big once I got them. And looking back in the past, I realized that maybe smaller things were way bigger. And there was one thing that was missing in my life that was the cause of this illusion. And that thing that was missing was now. So true. Yes. I'll let him finish his sentence and then I'll say what I want to say. I was all these years just i was obsessed about what's gonna happen I yes all those flowcharts that we are uh, we are talking schools but if this happens i'll do that and uh, six months from now i'll be here so i wanted to be in control i was so obsessed about my future oh my god taking the entire responsibility about the past but all i was doing was frequently swinging from past to future i noticed the words he used control and the presence or the or now he was always looking for the next thing. And that's the problem with, with money and fame. Like, you will never have enough of it. It's something that you can chase forever, but there will never be enough. But I also think in general, you know, one thing I noticed, especially here on YouTube, is these channels that make uh, routine videos where they say, oh, we wake up, I wake up at six, I sleep four hours. And then from six to seven, I do this. And seven to eight, I do this. And then, <laughs> and then on and on and on and on and on and on. And, I, I get that those videos are very inspiring, but being so focused on the things you need to do constantly, it seems like a nightmare to me. I, and I think it's the illusion of control, which is what he said. You want to think that you have control over your future, when in reality, it doesn't matter. Happiness comes from the moment. And personally, as well, the more I find myself in the moment, the better I'm doing it as a person. I really, really strongly believe that. Uh, we always have this dream that we want to chase. Oh, if I do this, then I'll be happy. Oh, if I reach this goal, then I'll be happy. What about now? Anyone, no matter who you are, should be able to be happy in the moment. That's the goal of life. That's what we should try and aim for. There's no always grass is greener or situation that will make you feel better. Why not just be happy now? Your life will never be perfect. Just recognize that and be happy for what you have. If you're in the moment, you immediately realize and become thankful for the things you do have instead of the things that you don't have. At least that's what I notice. And I think meditating is a really good technique to do that. Uh, but there are other ways as well, of course. Sorry, this became a whole big rant, but I find that uh, especially today, with it's so easy to get distracted by things. You can occupy your mind constantly, but I think it's important to set away some time to just do nothing. Focus on nothing, and that's what puts you in the moment. Well, <clears throat> I also figured that when I perform on stage or in front of camera, I'm so much excited. I am so much interested. I was paying He's so truly much attention in. that there was no room to think about future or the past. Yes. That's I was it. just there, in the moment. In the moment. I yeah. was alive, in true sense, when I was performing. And for the first time, trust me, in a long time, I understood the true meaning of success, which was not money plus recognition, but it was now plus excitement. I love this guy so much. 
Such a great dude. Now let me share another very short uh, story with you. When I was in school, 4 to 5.30 p.m. was the time when I was allowed to go out and play. I was asked to be an engineer, but the entire day I, was, I used to wait for 4 p.m. to happen. I would step out and the next one and a half hours felt like five minutes. <laughs> I didn't understand uh, this then, but now very honestly, very confidently, I can tell you this, that I am living that 4 to 5.30 life right now since last five years. <laughs> cause and effects are, no, are, are not different. Excitement is the cause, excitement is the effect. I get hired again and again because all these success mantras that we talk about, you know, hard work, belief, focus, vision, risk taking, talent, perseverance, we can go on and on. But all these success mantras are now the side effects of the yeah. process itself. I'm so yeah. engaged, I'm so, it commands my attention so much that there's nothing else that I can think about. So hard work doesn't feel, feels like hard work. And there's nothing else that you can do but to uh, persist. Talent you will cultivate, vision you will get, focus there is no other way because it's, 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 it's commanding your attention so much. So, here I am right now, five years uh, down the line. Money and fame, although still could not earn back their reputation in my life. But let me show you one thing. I have much more of them than I had ever planned. And the best thing, uh, my college, uh, one of the professors was very dear to me, called me recently uh, about uh, asking me to plan this interaction with students and I very humbly requested that can I get my degree back. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, uh, it's happening and I'm very excited again. Thank you so much. Guys. So good. Sorry, I know this is very long, but he's such a cool dude. Such a smart guy. Such a good message as well. I that I so wholeheartedly believe in. Just such a tragedy. It really makes you sad to think that he passed away at such a young age. And, and I think I mentioned before in a video because the police say he died from suicide. And at least personally, someone that lives in the moment, I cannot make sense out of committing suicide. And there's been, there's been this whole controversy and, and uh, theories about did he really, what happened, people don't know. And I don't really want to get into that. I wanted this to just be a video of tribute to him because I think he's a cool dude and I wanted to share with my audience. But yeah, it's just this statement he had about living in the moment. I, obviously, this is a couple of years ago, but it this you wouldn't commit suicide if you had this mindset. It just, it, I don't believe that at all. I really don't. Uh, but then again, yeah, it is a couple years ago and I don't want to add things to that But that's just how I felt while listening to it. Rest in peace, Sushant. I would have loved to meet you. Seemed like a fucking awesome dude, but I'm really glad that you were you. Thank you for being you. And thank you for watching this video. I know it's a bit different, but that's it for now. Hate him.